A quorum being present, the first half of our annual town meeting will now come to order. Madam Clerk, has the warrant been properly posted as required by the general laws of the town of Granby? Yes, it has. Please rise as Select Board Chairman, Mr. Shinaki, will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Sitting in the front today, we have the Finance Board, the Select Board, the Town Administrator, the Town Attorney, and the Town Clerk. In the front rows, we have the Planning Board as well as the School Committee. If you are a resident, a non-resident, or a non-voter, you must sit in the designated area in the back of the gym. And for this meeting, we are doing something a little different with discussion. If you would like to comment or discuss on an article, please line up over here to the left by the bleachers. And I will call on you individually to come up to the mic in the front. And then you can begin your discussion after you tell us your name and your address. If you cannot come to the mic because you aren't able to, please raise your hand and I will have a mic come to you. Please do not direct any comments or questions or discussions to a particular member at town meeting. Please tell them to me and I will direct it to the appropriate person. Lastly, please note in the back when you got your handouts, there's a little orange booklet which tells you about the parliamentary procedure. Oh no, not the big orange booklet, but the neon orange booklet, which tells you about town meeting procedure and gives you instructions on how to make an amendment or perhaps ask for a secret ballot vote or a recount. So if you don't understand the procedure behind what we're doing, this will help you. The moderator will now recognize Mr. Albert Bale to come forward. Some of you may notice that Ed Ryan is not sitting up here in the front this time. Ed Ryan is not in his usual place tonight because he was, as he was at our last town meeting, Ed died July 29th, 2018. Ed has been our town council since 1995 when he replaced Ray Randall who died way too young. In other words, Ed has been our town council for 23 years and has been a good town council for all these years. I have known Ed since he was a high school student at Rosary High School, but most of you know him only from his service at town meeting. What you don't know is that he was in Granby quite often. For seven years before the Granby Cafe closed, a group of us from Granby would meet every Thursday night. Ed and his wife, Priscilla, would come in at least once a month and sit at the same, same table in the dining room, right inside the double doors near the entrance to the bar. When the cafe closed, Priscilla took pictures to remember how close it was to them. Thank you. Recently, we had another loss. Last week, we lost one of our more dependable town meeting participants when Pamela Pam Mayhew died. Pam in years past served nine years on the Granby School Committee. In recent years, Pam waged a courageous battle against multiple systems atrophy. If her health permitted, she would attend town meeting and vigorously participate in either asking questions or stating her opinion. Pam set an example for all of us that town meeting is important and we have responsibility to attend and participate. Pam, we will miss you. Thank you. In addition to Attorney Ryan and Pam, I would like to take a moment of silence to remember the others who have passed on this year, those Granby Town meeting members and public servants who have contributed to the success and vitality of our town, including most recently Pat Shandry, Jeff Skowski, and Jim Robero.
Thank you. The moderator will now recognize the town clerk for reminders. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming out. Just a reminder for next Monday, we have our annual election. It is here at the high school. Um, it will open at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. If you are unable to attend, um, we do. I can do an absentee ballot up until Friday, 5 o'clock in my office. So that would be May 17th. Um, so hopefully everybody will get out and vote, and we'll see you then. Thank you. The moderator will now recognize Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 1. Yes. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to conduct the business of the meeting as follows. On May 3rd, uh, sorry, May 13th, 2019, consider Articles 2 through 11, and on June 10th, 2019, consider Articles 12 through 39. Thank you. Second, is there any discussion or questions? In order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls for a motion to recess the annual town meeting and call to order the special town meeting. Can I have a second? All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. Any opposed? A quorum being present, the special town meeting will now come to order. Madam Clerk, has the warrant been properly posted as required by the general laws of the town of Granary? So now the moderator will recognize Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 1 under the special town meeting. Madam moderator, at this time, the planning board was to withdraw Article 1. Uh, reason being is that the planning board uh, wishes to have more input from the Board of Health as well as conservation before we bring this motion forward again. So the motion on Article 1 has been withdrawn, so we are moving on to the motion under Article 2. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 2. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the bylaws of the town of Granby, volume through 3, chapter 21, zoning bylaws, section 3, use regulations by striking section 3.0, schedule use regulations, section 3.1, prohibited uses, table 1, schedule use regulations, section 3.2, dimensional density regulations, and section 3.3, existing building non-conforming uses and inserting a new section 3.0 scheduling of use regulations section 3.1 prohibited use uses table one schedules of use regulations section 3.2 dimensional and de density regulations section 3.3 existing building non-conforming uses the entire text of which this is set forth in attachment for report and recommendations of the planning board dated May 11, 2019, which is here in re refer re reference as availability at the select board's office. Thank you. Second, are there any questions or discussion? All right, in order for this motion to pass, it must pass by a two-thirds majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a two-thirds majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 3. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the bylaws of the Town of Granby, Volume 3, Chapter 21 
zoning bylaws, section five, special use regulations and performance standards, section 5.0, single family dwelling on the state lots. By striking the current language in subsection 5.41 and inserting no more than two estate lots may be adjacent to each other at the street line without site plan approval. Additional estate lots up to a total of five consecutive estate lots require site plan approval. Can I have a second? Are there any questions or comments under the motion under Article 3? All right, in order for the motion to pass, it must pass by a two-thirds majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 4. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the bylaws of Town of Granby, Volume 3, Chapter 21, Zoning Bylaws, Section 5, Special Use and Regulation Performance Standards, by adding a new section as follows. Section 5.13, Business State Lots. 5.13.0, Business State Lots shall be permitted in the general business, mixed use, industrial, and limited industrial districts. They are subject to dimensional and density regulations as stipulated in Section 3, Table 2. The Table of dimens Dimensional and de Density Regulations in accordance with the uh, additional requirements specified below. 5.13.1. Two estate lots may be adjacent to each other at the street line without site plan approval. Additional estate lots, up to a total of five consecutive state lots, require site plan approval. 5.13.2, the area of each estate lot, excluding the access strip, shall be a minimum of 80,000 square feet. 5.13.3, any state, a state lot created must be held in the common and contingent ownership with the front access strip. 5.13.4, the state lots shall have a minimum street footage of not less than 40 feet and an access with width of not more or less than 40 feet from the front of lot line to the principal structure. 5.13.5, the front width of the lot where the principal building is to be constructed shall be 150 feet, a minimum parallel to the street line. The 40 feet building setback line is to be measured from the point of the lot where the 150 feet minimum has been satisfied 5.13.6, the access strip shall begin at the street line and where 150 feet minimum width has been satisfied. Acceptable examples are shown in illustration type 1.1-4 and appendix A. Thank you. Can I have a second? Is there a discussion? Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. We're doing a lot of zoning changes, and I'm certainly not one that's focused on that. So given all of the changes, the estate lots, which I assume are residential, these business lots that we're talking about, is there some kind of projects or something that are going on town that are motivating the planning board and the zoning commission to make these changes? Or are we anticipating something else? So. Okay. Uh, well, some of them have came from uh, residents of the town of Granby inquiring about it. Uh, this particular order, article that refers to uh, business lots, it gives the opportunity uh, for, for instance, uh, some of the land on 202 where they may not have the frontage to actually um, build the building, but there's enough land behind certain property owners and that will give them the access that they need to get to that property behind there to build something they wish to build it. So there's encumbered land that we need to provide right-of-way access in order for them to develop that for business use? Well, this, this bylaw will let that happen, yes. Okay, thank you. Come on up. Uh, 
Um, Madam Moderator, I make a motion that we amend this to require site plan approval on all five estate lots uh, for businesses because first sentence and just leave it all so read, read it. the what you want it to say you want 5.13.1 to say this that's what you need to read okay under 5.13.1 change to read cross off the first line then cross off the word additional and it shall stay all estate lots up to a total of five consecutive estate lots require site plan approval. Do I have a second for the amendment? I'm sorry, first I need a motion to stop debate on the main article to discuss the amendment. Do I have a motion to stop debate? Yeah. Do I have a second? So now we will discuss the amendment. So what is being put forth to be clear, is 5.13.1 will read, estate lots up to a total of five consecutive estate lots require site plan approval. So is there discussion or questions? Come on up. Madam Moderator, Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. Uh, why would we limit it to five consecutive? Um, why wouldn't we just say all business estate lots would require site plan approval? Because that would mean that if you had six consecutive lots, you wouldn't need site plan approval? No. Uh, to answer your question, Joe, what the planning board is proposing is to open land that's basically landlocked, both in the residential side and the business side. Residents are residents. Businesses, we don't know what they'll be. And that's why I'm recommending an amendment to this for the simple reason we could end up with a liquor store next to a daycare center because there's no site plan being done on the first two. So I'm not against at all on having five um, business estate lots. I just believe they all should have site plans so everybody would have input what kind of business it is next to each other. Uh, I thought this was already changed. That's why I just picked it up now. I, I thought it was changed before. But again, this is based on site plan approval. So we're looking at the actual site not actual what business will be next to each other. Emory, if you'd like to speak, you can come over here and wait. Yeah, I, Thank oh, you. Okay, I just don't understand the five limitation. Are we saying that anybody that has land to develop, we won't let them create more than five estate lots? Because you're saying five consecutive. So that's, I, I don't have a problem with the change to require everybody but you're putting a limitation of five when you're just saying any business estate lot is going to require site plan approval. Isn't that what you're asking for? But at the limit would be five. And after the, after the five consecutive state lots, there would need to be a normal lot. And they could, could actually go to another five consecutive lots. You want, you want to stop at five because we don't want to go down and have someone have 10 consecutive lots and just to keep on going. It'd be no number. To okay. stop that. Okay, well then I would just suggest that you would amend it to read um, no more than five consecutive state lots, that's all. Because so are you suggesting another amendment? I guess I am, that uh, if you look at the second line, that all the state lots and no more than five consecutive state lots would require site plan approval. So I need that in writing, and I need another motion to stop Discussion on the first amendment to discuss to begin discussion on the second amendment because you're amending an amendment. Okay, so I need to make that motion. Is that correct? Or do I, I just need, need your to amendment write? in writing? Okay. And I also need a motion to make an amendment of the amendment that was offered. Okay, so I'll do it in writing and then I need to come back here to do that. You can make the motion right now. Okay. So I get the second. 
Okay, so I am making a motion to stop. You're I, making a motion to, oh, I will stop discussion on the First Amendment. Okay. Can I have a motion to stop discussion on the First Amendment? And a second? So now we have stopped discussing the amendment that Jay put forth, and now Mr. Fernier would like to request a set, an amendment on the amendment, which is? Uh, you want me to write that down, right? I do, I need that okay, in writing. Okay, so let me get it in writing, and then I'll come back up and read it. Well, say or, it. Okay, then say what it. I would say would be that all business estate lots, or maybe I don't need that word since it's All additional estate lots. All estate lots. All it's estate not even lots. additional. Okay, and no more than a total of five consecutive estate lots would require site plan approval. All estate lots, no more than a total of five consecutive estate lots on a single parcel would require site plan approval because we're relating to the size of the land, I guess. He's the same thing. No, he wants. He wants it to read, all estate lots, no more than a total of five consecutive estate lots, require site plan approval. On a single parcel. On a single parcel, correct. On a single parcel. Yes, yeah, so please write that down. Okay. So now I will open up discussion to the amendment on the amendment. And we will, I will not entertain any more amendments at this point until we dispose of these. Are there any questions on the second amendment? Come on up. Emory, I ran 18 Crescent Street. So just to clarify, are we saying that we will not have any site plan approval for anything up to five in this new amendment? Reverse. We will have site plan approval up to five, but no more than five. Is that what we're saying then? Okay, yes. thank you. Come on up. Uh, Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. I agree 100% with what Jay says that all business estate lots should have site plan approval. We, we have to know, we have to approve businesses that are squeezed in to lots. So I agree 100% with what Jay said. Okay, but right now we're talking yes. about Joe's with, amendment? I agree with Joe's amendment if I understand it correctly. It's a little confusing the way it was worded. Okay. Let's let, you, you want me to read it to you? Could you read it again? The amendment is all estate lots and no more than a total of five consecutive estate lots on a single parcel require site plan approval. So what he's, what he's saying is that on any one parcel of land, you cannot have more than five estate lots business, correct? And of those five, they all need site plan approval. Correct? Okay, thank you. That's what he's saying. Well, then you need to say that. Do I need to make another motion or? Am no, I we're set with the motions. Okay. Um, come on, fourth. Okay. Jim Tromke, 290 Taylor Street. Just to clarify, all business lots need site plan approval. Can you go closer to the microphone? All business lots need site plan approval. This, this article is just to address the, the size and allowing the, the, the estate lots, the business lots, to happen. Currently, in the business zone, there are no estate lots permitted. This is allowing up to five with site plan approval. Every business lot has to have a site plan, whether it's an estate lot or otherwise. So the... the the, art, or the, the amendment is a moot point. It's already in place. So you would like town meeting to vote the second amendment down, the one we are talking about, right. Correct. because you are saying it's a moot point. It's a moot point. It's already in place. 
Okay. Thank you. Do you want to speak? When, when the, the, the planning board looked at this, uh, Mr. Trompke is the, the vice chair for the planning board, and as you stated as well, all business lots require site plan approval. We were looking at how do we make it beneficial for landowners, uh, for the example I gave was on uh, Route 202, and, and, and those such areas. Um, there's, this is, talks about estate lots, business estate lots. Uh, any business lot falls under site plan approval. And this is a business lot. It just happens to be a state business lot, but it is a business lot. Come on up. Thank you. Uh, my question is, is in the way that the um, 5.13.1 reads, it says adjacent to each other at street line without site plan approval. No, currently, currently we are not. Currently we're talking only about the amendment. Right, and then with the amendment, he thought they left that in. No, he took that out. That's out entirely. Yes. Well then, uh, if this is voted down and we go back to the original amendment, then someone is going to have to explain what the language without site plan approval does in relation to what Jim said about all things replied, all lots replied same for, but there's something here that doesn't work together. So, thank you. All right. S come on up to the microphone, please. Seamus Connolly, 21 Ferry Hill Road, Granby. Uh, on the uh, state lot and the other uh, thing like uh, the, um, I'd say my suggestion would be to stick with the original one uh, because it just makes more sense to myself and I don't think we really need to change anything. You know, you guys can always approve or disapprove of a business uh, for example, say somebody wanted to buy uh, street lumber, the old street lumber place. You guys could approve of the person having a business there or not. And 202 is usually, as I can recall, is the business district of uh, Granby. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there any further discussion on the amendment, the second amendment, before I call for a vote to see if it's going to pass. Second. The second amendment. Yeah, I'll read it. I'll read it in a minute. Do you have a question on the amendment? Uh, Emory Avenue, 18 Crescent Street. I, I'm still not sure that I understand this correctly. I, um, it was my original understanding that that's why I asked the first question, that business lots required uh, site plan approval. The way it reads here, it says two estate lots, and I'm assuming it's referring to business estate lots, um, no, maybe adjacent to each other at the street line without site plan approval. Right now, we are, what it says, what it is going to say, what we're going to vote on, and you don't have to vote it up. We can go back to the original amendment. What we are discussing is for 5.13.1 to read all estate lots and no more than a total of five consecutive estate lots on a single parcel require site plan approval. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. So in order for the amendment to pass, the one I just read, it must pass by a majority. And then if it passes, All right, we, uh, Jay would like to speak one more time on this amendment and then we will vote on it. Just so we're not confused, I'm gonna use Joe Fernia's amendment. Number, I don't know what's one, two, or three, but under Joe, he is saying on one parcel. I disagree with that part because that means one property owner. We wanna open this five estate lots up 
to multiple property owners, not just one. So I would disagree with the restriction to one parcel. On the, on the second part, when Jim came up, he says in another part of our bylaws, it says all business lots require site plans. If we use that in the language here, we'd have a conflict because the first line says without site plan approval. All I'm saying is to make it simple, all estate lots up to a total of five consecutive estate lots require a site plan. Just simple. So I don't want to see a liquor store against a, uh, a daycare center. They, they look at traffic. They look at 18 wheelers coming in and all this stuff. If you don't have a site plan, nobody would be looking at it. And if we have this, we're conflicting our own bylaws by saying one place says we have to have site plan, another place says you don't have to have site plan. Come on up if you have a question. Moderator, Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. In rebuttal to that comment, I thought that the clarification was that you can put up to five consecutive state lots in a single parcel. That's why I put it in there. Through that language, you are not limiting the number of estate lots except in the development of estate lots on a single parcel of land. That doesn't mean that you cannot, and unless I'm missing something here, that doesn't mean that you cannot put estate, business estate lots on other parcels. It's just that if you want to develop an individual parcel, you cannot have more than five consecutive estate lots on that individual parcel. Seeing that there's no more questions, because everyone's thoroughly confused with this, <laughs> we are going to vote on Joe Fernia's amendment, the second amendment that came up. He's trying to amend the original amendment. I will read the amendment and then we will vote. In order for the amendment to pass, it must pass by a majority. And then we'll see what happens after, if it passes or not. So we are going to be voting on all estate lots and no more than a total of five consecutive estate lots on a single parcel require site plan approval. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? All right, I'm, I'm going to actually ask for a count. What? So all those in favor of the amendment, please raise your cards and keep them up and raise them high. Thank you. All those opposed, please raise your cards high. Thank you.
All right, apparently my eyes fooled me. You can put your cards down. The amendment does not pass by a majority, by a, a great majority. So, we are now going back to the original amendment to discuss, the original amendment that was presented by Mr. Joyce, which reads, let me remind you, change 5.13.1 to all estate lots up to a total of five consecutive estate lots require site plan approval. Are there any questions or comments? Come on up, Mr. Fernia. So what happens if you have six consecutive estate lots because you have no limitation? So does that mean none of them require site plan approval? Uh, Joe, basically what it is now, you can only, right now, as Jim Trompke said, that there's no provisions for any business estate lots at all in Granby. We're trying to allow five business estate lots so they can use the landlocked land and increase the revenue of the town. A similar bylaw is on residents. The only difference, a resident is a resident. A business can be multiple. What we're saying is we're putting a limit on five. It doesn't mean that somebody can't come in and go to ZBA and go for more, but when you use the word one parcel, if you go to the assayer's office, that's one segment of land. We don't want to restrict it to one owner of land. They can have as many owners as they want. We don't care. It's just open up five businesses and all of them require site plans. That's all we're coming up with, plain and simple. Right now it's zero. We want to open it up to five to create revenue for the town, and they, five is the maximum on the business estate lots. That's, I don't know how simple it is. So with that said, and just kind of reference what Jay has said, it's up to five, so meaning that there could be five consecutive estate lots, business estate lots together. After those five, if a, a regular lot with the correct footage is there, then after that lot, an, up to another five consecutive business lots can go again. If you'd like to ask a question or speak, you can come on up to the mic, and if there's more than one person, please line up to the left over there. Oh, you, you can, that's fine. Seamus Connolly, 21 Fairhill Road. I have a comment. I would suggest vote for this. More revenue to the town means less taxes. More revenue to the town, mean more business, we can put a business tax. Businesses are good for Granby's economy. Business is good for an economy, period. It's simple economics, Granby. So please, I would say allow more businesses to come in. A big why? Uh, by where the street lumber is, maybe a, 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 a Burger King, maybe a McDonald's. All right, thank you, Seamus. You're welcome. Come on up. Hi, I'm Harvey Lijek, 104 Amherst Street. I think the reason for the difference is the grammar. It's simply the grammar, and I don't think you're, you're getting the fact that if you read this over here, it doesn't say you can have a maximum of five. It says up to five, we can give them a site. So well, is there somewhere else that there is a maximum of five in, in the bylaws? So you're trying to do that here, you just need to say it more clearly. It's saying up to five. If there's only enough land to support two businesses that are landlocked, then it would be for two. If there's enough land for three, it would be three. If there's enough land for four, it would be four. If there's enough land for five, it would be five. But that's the maximum. And as Glenn said, what you'd have to do then, for in the business area, for another business, 
they'd have to have 150 foot of frontage, and then you could find that five business estate lots again. Does that make it simple for you? We're trying to use the landlocked land to create, create revenue, but since businesses are all different, and we don't know what they are, they need traffic control, safeties, whatever the fire department needs, they all need a site plan. And we don't want a contradiction between this bylaw and another bylaw in our bylaws. Can I clarify that? I'll try. I'm not, so the original um, article is not, is not there right now. We're discussing what Jay's uh, amended is. And, and I understand what you're saying. I think you want to say limit up to five. Is, is that correct? You want a number so said. five stops. Oh. He said. Oh. Is that what you're looking at? You want to st five be the limit? Okay. But that's not what No, it's not what Jay. That's what I understand what he's saying. Con Ford. Abelson, 134 Cold Hill. Uh, do we need two sentences? One that says every business needs an estate plan. And a second one, on any parcel, there can be up to five businesses. Is that what you're saying? Okay. This, Who's that? this is Jay's amendment. Not, it's, I don't want to speak to what he's saying. So. Well, uh, if, Did, if rather can you repeat, than... Can you repeat your two sentences for Jay, and then he can tell you if that's what the meaning of his amendment is? I'm sorry. He had a question. Every business needs a site plan. On any parcel, there can be up to five businesses. Well, I would disagree on any parcel because a parcel is a lot of land that could be owned by one person, okay? One if you have multiple people that own different parcels of the landlocked land. I don't want to restrict it to only one person that owns the land. As many people in the landlocked land can have up to five. That's why I'm saying leave the word parcel out. I, I don't understand when you're talking about multiple people owning. Uh, on a parcel, whatever, whomever owns it, there can be five businesses. Is that right? If you restrict it to a single parcel, according to the assayer's office, then you're only allowing one owner of one uh, plot there. And I'm saying you could have uh, a person here that owns 20 acres and a person here that owns another 20 acres, and there are butters. Yes. Well, I don't see anything wrong with this person getting three of the estate lots and this one getting two, share the wealth. If you say the word parcel, then you're restricting it only to the one. That's why I'm saying we shouldn't be doing that. That's all, because you, as Glenn stated, you cannot have, you gotta put 150 foot uh, other business between the estate lots. I, I'm sorry, I, I just can't follow you. Uh, maybe it's absolutely logical what you're saying, but I, I'm sorry I can't follow it. John Libera from Taylor Street. Uh, it seems to me that there are, you've said that there are two things which are trying to be accomplished. One to put a maximum of five lots, and the second is to have site approval. Um, and I think I certainly agree, would agree with that. But what I'm saying, I ask the question now, is the same as I think as the last two people, is that the way the sentence reads, you're not accomplishing two things in the one sentence. And I think you need two sentences to do that. The way the sentence reads, I think, as perhaps an English teacher would tell us, is that the emphasis is on the site approval, and it does not seem to restrict you to five lots. It just restricts the approval. If that, if that is the case, then I would suggest that we vote on the amendment, and then if it is voted down because people don't believe it's clear, then someone else can suggest a clearer amendment at that point. I will allow. You to come forward. Robert Cannon, 67 Cold Hill Road. Um, 
Following up on what John's comment was, since we seem to really have confusion around the whole notion of five adjacent lots and so forth, one of the easier thing to do was simply to have it say, uh, we'll amend 5.131 to read, all estate lots under the section 5.13 shall require site plan approval, period, end of story. It gives basically the site plan approval. Uh, we leave out five adjacent lots, uh, and which really is a redundancy. Well, we'll vote on the amendment as drafted, and then we can, if, it, if someone feels like it needs to be amended again, we can discuss it. So in order for the amendment to pass that Jay has proposed, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? So the amendment fails. So now we go back to the main motion. So the motion reads as it's written in your uh, handout. Are there any discussion or comments? Come on up. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. Madam Moderator, I'd like to amend the article to say that all business estate lots need a site plan approval, period. So you want to amend, you want to add something to the article as? No, I want to amend it. I want, I want to read as I stated it. I want to change it. Where do you want to change it, though? I want to rewrite it. <laughs> no, no, I understand that. Um, 5.13.1. 5.13.1. You want it to all be deleted yes. and simply read, say it again. All business lot, estate lots shall need a site plan approval, period. Can you please put that in writing? Doesn't matter who puts it in writing as long as I have it in writing. So can I have a motion to stop debate on the main motion? Second. So now I will open the floor up to the amendment that was just proposed, which reads 5.13.1 to be changed to all business estate lots should need a site plan approval. Concurrence right? together, Robert Cannon, Cold Hill, 67 Cold Hill Road, Granby. In concurrence together, uh, would it be better to simply have it read as follows? All state lots under the section 5.13 shall require site plan approval, and I can certainly put that in writing for you. I need something in writing. Yeah. So yeah. the two of you put it together so I can open it up to the floor for discussion.
How many people does it take to write an amendment? I know. This is what they're proposing. All estate lots under this section 5.13 shall require site plan approval. There shall be no more than five consecutive estate lots. Do I have a second on the amendment? So let's open it for discussion. Are you standing up to discuss something? Come on up, Mr. Randall. Oh, good luck. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Moderator. I don't think anybody can be any more confused yes. at this point than me. I'm, I'll admit to being clueless on some of this crap here. I see our town council sitting here with a very perplexed look on his face. I'd like to hear from you, Brian, as to what, what your thoughts are on some of this. Brian O'Toole, Kellogg Street, uh, also town council. Uh, Mr. Randall, I, I think if I understand your question here, if it's regarding the process of amending and then amending an amendment, kind of look at it as a, as a waterfall. You've got the main motion, you've got the amendment, you've got the amendment to the amendment, and it's frowned upon going any further than that. And then you have to go back up that wall, that waterfall, from the amendment to the amendment, to vote on that, back to the amendment, back to the main motion. It's confusing, and the manuals tell you not to go past more than an amendment to an amendment. Um, and that's what we've been doing here so far. Um, as part of the town meeting process, um, amendments have been brought forward. Um, and under the parliamentary procedure, we go back up by what is proposed by uh, the members of town meeting. Hope that helps. So we currently only have one amendment on the floor, which is what is up for discussion right now. So if you have a question, Mr. Fernier, on the amendment as proposed, please come forward. Gil Fernier, 154 Taylor. Okay, in what I just heard, are we saying that we can have more than 10, more than five business estate lots on all of our business property, except that we can't have more than five consecutive in one area? Or, as you said earlier, are we saying that we're only going to have a total of five business estate lots in the whole town? What the amendment reads is you're allowed to have five, well, first let me back up. To have a business, you need 150 foot of frontage. To do these estate lots, to enhance the landlocked property, 
they're only required to have 40 feet of frontage so they can get to the back. And then they can have up to five different property owners getting back there. It could be the same property owner, but however the, the plans are drawn up for the land. Once you get to five, you must have the next lot, if it's a business, has to have 150 foot of frontage. Once that happens, you can open five estate lots again. There is a limit on control the planning board needs to do this. If you don't put any limit, you could have a thousand estate lots in a row. Is that reasonable? No, I don't think so. I think the planning board did a very good job, except the one little conflict of this bylaw when it says without a site plan versus another place. And that's all I was trying to correct, was without the site plan. Every business lot should have a site plan. Should it be limited to five? That's the number they pick. I got no problem with that. Because then they can have a, a lot, what, 150 feet, and they can have another five estate lots. That's it, simple. Not to, the, not to add to the confusion, Greg Leonard, uh, Bachelor Street. Um, but just to clarify for myself, once the 150 foot of front space, frontage has been satisfied, does the 40 foot access strip come out of that? Or is it separate from? It's a separate lot. It'd be a separate Wait, and, just answer on the microphone so it gets picked up. Right, if you use the estate lots, you use up to five. So that you take 40 feet for each one times five is 200 foot of frontage for five businesses. Then they would have one business hypothetically for 150 foot of frontage. And then you could do five more business estate lots. The 40 foot of frontage for each state lot gives them room to put a driveway in or an access way, whatever you want to call it, for each of the businesses landlocked in the back. Is that, did that help? That helps. Okay. The second question is, since every business lot needs site plan approval, mm -hmm. I don't understand why that is being entered into this entire discussion. Because if you read the first sentence of the original proposed bylaw change, it is allowing the first two not to have a site plan approved. So there'd be a conflict in our bylaws from one section to another. And that's what I was trying to get rid of. Just so everybody knows, um, a lot of the questions that have come up, and I've been standing behind here, and I haven't answered them because they're not my amendment. And I want people to understand that. I'm not gonna to speak to someone else's amendment that they're bringing forward. I spoke to what the planning board was bringing forward, so I want people to understand that. I'm not just standing back there um, wondering what's going on. I want people to know it's not my amendment, so it's not up to me to discuss what someone else may or may not thought. Are we ready to vote on the amendment? I will read the amendment. In order for the amendment to pass, it must pass by a majority. So 5.13.1 will read, all estate lots under this section 5.13 shall require site plan approval. There shall be no more than five consecutive estate lots. All those in favor of that amendment, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The amendment passes unanimously. Woohoo! No, 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 now we've got to discuss.
So now, we are going to discuss the motion under Article 4 as amended. Are there any questions on the motion under Article 4 as amended? So in order for the motion under Article 4 to pass, it must pass by a two-thirds majority. So all those in favor of the motion under Article 4 as amended, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 5. And before I move forward with Article 5, I just want to take a minute and say thank you for everybody uh, for their input. Uh, this is what uh, a town meeting is for, for everybody to have a say and, and voice their, their thoughts and concerns. So I just want to say thank you on that point. Article 5. I move, Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the bylaws of the Town of Granby, Volume 3, Chapter 21, Zoning Bylaws, Section 3, Use of Regulations, Table 1, sch Schedule of Use of Regulations, by inserting the new bylaw number 3.5.23 as follows. Uh, as you see with the chart uh, going down, uh, the bylaw number, land use classification, standards and conditions, uh, each area, uh, 3.5 retail and services, 3.5.2.3 business estate lots subject to section 5.3 and it refers to what areas they're allowed in, residential, um, general business, industrial, industrial two, and uh, Village Common. Uh, on the bottom, you have no, no, yes, 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 and no. Second. Is there any comments or discussion? Do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything? Then? So in order for the motion under Article 5 to pass, it must pass by a two-thirds majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator calls on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 6. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the bylaws of the Town of Granby, Volume 3, Chapter 21, Zoning Bylaws, Section 6, Administration and Enforcement, Section 6.2, Special Permits, Subsection 6.21, Special Permit Granting Authorities, by striking the current language and inserting the definition, the Special Permit Granting Authority shall be in accordance with Table 1, Scheduled Use of Regulations. Second. Are there questions or discussion? In order for the motion to pass under Article 6, it must pass by a two-thirds majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 7. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to amend the bylaws of the town of Granby. Volume 3, Chapter 21, Zoning Bylaws, Section 5, Special Use Regulations and Performance Standards, Section 5.99, Large Scale Grounded Mounted Solar Photovoltaic Installations, by adding a new subsection as follows 5.99.13, Large Scale Ground Mounted Solar Energy Systems Moratorium. Notwithstanding any other provisions of the zoning or general bylaws, to the contrary, the town hereby adopts the temporary moratorium on the use of land or built structures for large-scale ground-mounted solar energy systems 
that are at least 40,000 square feet in area over 250 gigawatts, gigawatts of energy production. The moratorium shall be in effect through September 30th, 2019, or until such time the town adopts zoning or general bylaws amendments that regulate large scale ground mounted solar energy systems, whichever occurs earlier. During the moratorium period, the town shall undertake a planning process to address potential impacts of large scale ground mounted solar energy systems in the town considered by Massachusetts Department of Energy Sources guidance for re regulating solar energy systems and shall consider adopting new zoning and general bylaws in response to these new issues. Second, questions or discussion? Come on up, um, Mr. Connolly first, and then you can come up after. Uh, yes, Seamus Connolly, 21 Ferry Hill Road, Granby. Um, if we were to have this big uh, solar thing, uh, would you guys be willing to put um, uh, motion sensors, alarms that would go straight to the fire department or police station when these, if say you build these, the solar thing that Glenn and Jay just discussed? I think your, your question is outside the scope of the article. I think it was, but I was just concerned for the town's uh, well-being and safety. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Just consider it. Come on forward. Madam Moderator, my name is James Naraki. I'm the second generation of Naraki Construction, and I currently reside at 4 Lyon Street. I just would like to make this statement. We are against a solar moratorium proposed. As a landowner, I don't believe the town should restrict how I can utilize my property since there are regulations currently in place for solar projects. In the event that the town still wants to move forward with the moratorium, we would like also to request that the existing applications be exempt from the moratorium. That could be accomplished by specifying the zoning bylaw change shall not apply to any projects for which a special permit or building permit application was filed prior to the date of the bylaws adoption at the town meeting. This approach would be far reasonable for those who have invested significant time and money into possible projects. More importantly, if the town feels there should be changes to the solar by regulations in the bylaws, they can propose those changes without putting a moratorium in place. Thank you. So are you suggesting an amendment to the motion as it's written? Yes, if it passes, I well, would like um, One second. So we'll have town council speak to your request to be grandfathered in. Um, again, Brian O'Toole, town council. Uh, chapter 40A, section six of the Massachusetts general laws um, deals with um, pre-existing non-conforming uses, um, even in a moratorium situation. So Mass general laws controls on when a bylaw, whether it's temporary as a moratorium or permanent um, bylaw, uh, is affected um, by the passing of a bylaw. Um, the town can't adopt either bylaws or that are in contravention of that or, a, a, or an amendment to that. So it'd be my opinion that that would be um, uh, illegal. Thank you. Come on, come forward. If you'd like to discuss some, uh, discuss some more, why don't you line up over here and then after Mr. Joyce speaks, I will call you forward. Madam Moderator, I move that the September 30th, 2019 be struck and replaced with a January 31, 2020, and the sentence read, the moratorium shall be in effect through January 31st of 2020 or until such time as the town adopts zoning or general bylaw amendments, which includes the Massachusetts Attorney General's Office completed review and response that regulate large scale ground mounted 
solar energy systems, whichever occurs earlier. Can I have a second on the amendment he's proposing before we discuss it? Okay. Would you like to explain your amendment? Uh, basically, the 30 September 2019 date was selected for the special town meeting we had on 4 February of 2019. And if you're to take that 30 September 2019 date and back it up according to Massachusetts general law, discussion on this had to start April the 23rd. We're way past April the 23rd. So we have to extend the date of the moratorium out to meet Massachusetts general law. That's the purpose of my amendment. So can I have a motion to stop debate on the main article to discuss the amendment? And second? So I'll now open the floor up to discuss the amendment that was just proposed by Mr. Joyce, which is basically changing the date to September 30th. I'm sorry, to strike September 30th, 2019, and to replace it with January 31st, 2020. Are there any questions or comments on that? Come on up. I think his question is not on the amendment. Is your comment not on the amendment? Right, okay, come on forward then. We're talking about the amendment. Uh, Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. I agree 100% with what Jay proposed about extending the date. The planning board should have enough time to get all the information they need to uh, write a bylaw that makes sense about solar projects. So it, it's common sense. They shouldn't be rushed. And I agree with extending the date for the reasons Jay gave. Thank you. Any further questions or discussion on the amendment? Come on up. I too 100% Oh, Seamus Connolly, 21 Ferry Hill Road, Granby, Mass. Um, I 100% agree with Jay on to January 31st, 2020. I am in favor of that. Thank you. Thank you. So in order for the amendment to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor of amending the motion? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority or the amendment, I'm sorry, passes by a majority. In which case now we go back to discussing the main motion as amended with the new date. So come on forward. <clears throat> David Randall, 225 Taylor Street. Um, I was wondering why the planning board feels a need to pass further bylaws and further restrict landowners' options for use of their property. What bylaws, what issues do you see that solar creates? The planning board was tasked with this from uh, the select board. And by law, we have to um, take it under consideration and act on it. Well, Potential issues could be a variety of things. I mean, what are the, what proposed bylaws? I, you must have some ideas as to what you intend to do. That's all based on what the, the public wants. Uh, there's, there's uh, you know, there'll be public uh, meetings and public hearings to get input from the public uh, to decide what they want to do as far as if they do or want to change the bylaws. It, it's not just up to the planning board. Any other comments or discussion? In order for the motion, at, oh, go ahead, come on up. Jim Tromke, 290 Taylor Street. I also sit on the planning board. Um, currently, <clears throat> just so the residents know, there are the, the um, solar projects that we're referring to 
um, have oversight based on site plan approval and there's a special permitting process which requires a public hearing to uh, seek information and input from abutters. Um, there's, al there's also uh, uh, peer reviews from engineering that, uh, that the planning board recommends for stormwater management. Um, there's, let's see, what else do we have? We've got input from DPW, fire department, police department. You know, I think there's, I think there's a quite a bit of oversight right now with, with these. I know there's concerns with clear cutting. Uh, that was one of the, the uh, things that were mentioned to the planning board. But I'm using that as a reason to uh, put a moratorium in place I don't feel is fair because we already, uh, clear cutting can be, can be had by subdivisions, um, farming, uh, gravel pits, anything like that. There, that's allowed by, by, uh, by right. So singling out the, the uh, solar farms, I think puts an undue burden on the landowners here in town. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments before I call the vote? Joe Furnia, 154 Taylor Street. Is there any financial impact on residential solar relative to the amount of capacity of commercial or solar farms in town in terms of the ability to hook up with like National Grid or any of the electric grids? Under current Massachusetts law, solar companies themselves are tax exempt. So when a solar installation is put out there, it gives no revenue to the town. The, in my opinion, when, whether the select board, planning board, or any of our elected officials we should be looking out for the welfare of the entire community, and part of that is raising revenue. Since the solar installations themselves raise zero revenue, myself personally, I would much rather see the land be used for other things that can create money for the community. I'm not trying to sink out any single resident at all or anything, but there's a lot of municipalities that don't have the proper solar bylaws in place to include Granby by state law that are being sued. And this is just a moratorium. We're not saying no to anything. All we do is need some time for the residents to put in input into their elected officials to come up with the bylaws that they would like for their community and then they will vote on them at the special town meeting. In one aspect, nothing may change. In another aspect, the town people may want a lot of changes. But all this is sort of a cooling off period that so gives the town residents, again, time to attend the public hearings, talk to their elected officials, and let their elected officials know what they want, just like we did the amendments earlier so we can change stuff to the way you, the voters, want your town to operate and then vote on them from there. Uh, just to respect what Jay said, the town, our current um, solar farms that we do have in town, we do, the town does obtain something in value from them as far as revenue. So that, uh, nothing is Jay, but that's, that's kind of misleading. There is a Massachusetts general law that states it cannot be taxed, but those other things have been put in, put in place as far as that. And when the current um, solar farms that are in town, the town does receive some type of revenue uh, from them, whether it's an exchange for electricity uh, for our town buildings, for example. And if people wish to hear more, I would ask of our, uh, our town administrator to come up and speak to what we do receive from, from them.
speak. What Glenn is referring to is the solar farms on E Street by Kersarge. We do have a current agreement with them. We buy our electricity from one of their farms or all of their farms here in Granby. We also purchase the municipal electricity from another one of their farms in Ayr, Massachusetts. That's got nothing to do with them physically being here. It was negotiated. And if Kersarge wanted to, Today, they could go to the state tax appellate board and they could become tax exempt and then we have to pay them all the money back they've been paying us in the pilot agreement. Come forward. Bob Sheehan, Jr., 144 Taylor Street also a member of the planning board. Uh, what Mr. Joyce just referred to is a loophole in the law that we were told about. We, uh, we are of the understanding that this loophole is being closed, or possibly being closed, by the state legislature. Let's not run with scare tactics. Thank you. Come on up. Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. So let's say Kersarge changes their position. How much is the town exposed to financially if we have to repay them? I can't answer that one, <laughs> Mr. Fernia, to answer the question, we currently have pilot agreements with Nexamp. We have not received any payments from them yet because the site hasn't been built. The Kearsarge one, we have five pilot agreements, one for each of their sites. The total we received from that for last year was $144,000. We have not received a payment this year yet. So our, right now our potential exposure is only the $144,000 that they paid. In order for the motion, as amended, under Article 7 to pass, it must pass by a two-thirds majority. So all those in favor of the motion under Article 7, as amended, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a two-thirds majority. The moderator now calls on Mr. Everin to present the motion under Article 8. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, Emily Everin, on behalf of the uh, school committee, I move the town vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $11,207.92 for the purpose of funding a prior year bill for the Granby Public Schools. Thank you. Can I have a second? And discussion. Uh, this, uh, this article is related to an invoice from a couple of years ago when we were doing our superintendent search. After the search was completed, uh, the school committee asked to go back to clarify um, the, some of the services that were provided. By the time we got to pay the bill, which we tried last uh, fiscal year, we uh, found out that according to Massachusetts general law, we cannot pay a prior fiscal year's bill. And the only way for that bill to be paid is for the town meeting to approve that bill to be paid. Uh, otherwise, the uh, amount was, uh, was budgeted, was funded, and in fact, we tried to pay, but we could not, again, due to that law. So we're asking for your permission, uh, based on the law, to be able to pay this bill. Yeah. Come on, you can discuss. One minute. Thank you. 
John Libera speaking for the Finance Committee. Uh, we discussed this in our recent meeting, and this is very interesting. Uh, now, I've only had 30 years' experience on the Finance Committee. Bob Glessman has had more than that with town fairs, and neither one of us remembered this ever happening with the schools before. Uh, the bill got lost. It didn't get paid in the fiscal year in which it occurred. It's a bill. It's got to get paid. It's a legitimate bill. Um, so we heartily recommend that we vote in favor of this. Thank you. Are there any discussion or comments? Come on forward and, and then come forward. Shannon Connolly, 21 Fairhill Road. A bill's a bill. You got to pay it. You know what I mean? I would suggest we do pay it because I'm not trying to do any scare tactics, but you don't want your taxes to go up. So that would be my suggestion. Please vote for this. Think of your children and your grandchildren. Thank you very much. Rich Damaraki, Bachelor Street. <clears throat> One thing I don't understand, why doesn't this expense reduce the current year's school budget? It's obviously a school expense. So why doesn't it come out of their budget that they're asking for this year? All right. Uh, no, uh, I don't have the answer for that. Uh, we actually offered to pay it out of the school budget as well, but uh, I don't think we are able to because of the law. Okay, I know you said you can't pay it, but it could reduce your current budget for this year. So technically you're not paying it. We're reducing your budget. It's obviously a school expense. Technically you can, you can reduce the budget uh, as long as you do not go under the net school spending. Yes. We're nowhere near that. We're way over net school spending. We're not way over it, but we are over <laughs> it. Yes. Could the attorney maybe comment on that? Well, I have uh, Mr. Nally can comment on that. Okay. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, to answer Mr. Domarecki's question, technically it was an appropriation from fiscal year 2016, and uh, the funds being used are from free cash. So it is really from money from prior years. So it's not in this current school budget year. Uh, furthermore, uh, I would recommend the town meeting approve this uh, to avoid any collection costs or legal costs that we might incur. So I would encourage town meeting to approve this uh, article. All right. John Libera again for the Finance Committee. Uh, this uh, really addresses the question that uh, Mr. Damaraki uh, question added, asked. Uh, those are two separate issues. The payment of this bill is one issue. And then the second issue is what do you want the school budget to be for next year? Uh, what you want the school budget to be for next year will be determined at the June 10th meeting. And if at that time someone wanted to try to amend the budget down by $10,000, it could raise that uh, amendment, but it would have to be done separate you can't just say, well, let's have it reduce this year's budget. Thank you. So in order for the motion under Article 8 to pass, it must pass by a nine-tenths majority. I know it's odd, but that's the law. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a nine-tenths majority. The moderator now calls for a motion to dissolve the special town meeting and call to order the annual town meeting. Second, all those in favor? Thank you. Any opposed? So now the annual meeting will now resume with Article 2. So the moderator now calls forth Mr. Joyce to present the motion under Art, uh, uh, Article 2. Madam Moderator, I move the town hear the reports of the town offices in all standing and special committees and act thereon. Second. 
Is there any discussion or questions? So if this motion passes, we will have the, um, the reports at the next meeting at, in June. That's when they will be presented. So for this motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls on Mr. Joyce to present the motion under Article 3. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize the select board to conduct the following activities for physical year 2020. A, to sell after first giving notice of time and place of sale by posting such notices of sale in some convenient and public place in the town 14 days at least before the sale property taken by the town under tax title land of low value procedure, provided the select board or whoever they authorize to hold such public auction may reject any bid they deem inadequate. Under B, to apply for and accept federal and state grants or monies as may be available and allowed the select board to expend any funds received as sets forth an appropriate application. C, to enter into a contract with the Massachusetts Highway Department for construction and maintenance of public highways for the ensuing year. Second, and discussion. All right, so in order for the motion to pass under Article 3, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Shernacki to present the motion under Article 4. Good evening, everybody. Madam Moderator, I move the town authorize the various departments to receive compensation for services rendered for fiscal year 2020 as follows. A, the cemetery commissioners to dig graves and maintain equipment and grounds in the cemeteries at a wage rate that is no less than a minimum wage. B, the members of the Board of Assessors to be compensated $15 per parcel for necessary field work and data collection for services rendered in connection with the, revalu the revaluation and recertification process involving one-sixth of the improved parcels in town. C, the members of the Board of Health or their consultants to receive compensation at a wage rate of $35 per inspection or specific required activities. D, the members of the planning board or their appointees to receive compensation at a rate of $65 per inspection. Thank you. Second. And are there any questions or discussion? In order for the motion under Article 4 to pass, it must pass by majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator calls on Mr. Sharnacki to present the motion under Article 5. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize the Conservation Commission to charge a fee of $65 for each site inspection deemed necessary by the quorum of the commission. Fees shall be payable to the Town of Granby Conservation Commission 
and deposited in the conservation hatch fund. Can I have a second? Any discussion? In order for the motion under Article 5 to pass, it needs a majority. So all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 6. Thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I just want to apologize if I happen to pronounce uh, anybody's name wrong. <laughs> so, Article 6, I move the town vote to accept the following gifts in the calendar year 2018 for perpetual care of the cemetery lots. Richard Carbone, Carbone $300, Georgette L. English, $1,600, Wendy M. G. Howe, $475, Leo Fuger the third, seven hundred seventy-five dollars. Allison Saul Labrie and Kim Saul, six hundred dollars. Heather Rule, three thousand one hundred forty-five dollars. Maureen T and Douglas G Labie Jr., one thousand five hundred sixty-five dollars. Bryce M Flowers, one thousand five hundred sixty-five dollars. Felipe E and Alice M Danette. $1,565. Second. Any discussion? The motion under Article 6 must pass by majority. So all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator now calls on Mr. Sexton to present the motion under Article 7. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize expenditures from these revolving funds for fiscal year 2020 without further appropriation. Letter A, a parks oversight revolving fund from which the park oversight ad hoc committee may spend $40,000 in revolving funds monies in fiscal year 2020. B, a charter day revolving fund from which the charter day ad hoc committee may spend $50,000 in revolving fund monies in fiscal year 2020. C, a planning board fee revolving fund, which the planning board may spend $50,000 in revolving fund monies in fiscal year 2020. D, an after school activities program revolving fund for which the superintendent of schools may spend $20,000 in revolving funds monies in fiscal year 2020. E, a dog revolving fund from which the police chief may spend $12,784 in revolving fund monies in fiscal year 2020. Letter F, a library revolving fund from which the library commissioners may spend $2,000 in revolving fund monies in fiscal year 2020. Second, are there any discussion or comments? The motion under Article 7 must pass by a majority, so all those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Shanaki to present the motion under Article 8. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to authorize town departments to enter into agreements in accordance with Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 4A, for the fiscal year 2020. Can I have a second? Any questions or discussion on the motion under Article 8? Come on up. You got to come to the microphone because the TV people can't hear it. Well, you know what? The question is, please explain the motion under Article 8. What this allows under this section of the law is to enter into agreements with other governmental units to provide services that we can't provide with our current personnel. That's all it really does for us, Courage, okay? 
So in order for the motion to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor, please raise your cards. Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Mr. Bale to present the motion under Article 9. I move that the town vote to amend the bylaws of the town of Granby, Volume 2, Chapter 19, Personnel Bylaw Appendix D, Compensation Plan, Pay Schedules, and, and substituting a new Appendix D showing the nine pay grades and ten steps to be effective July 1st, 2019. Can I have a second and discussion? Come, come forth. Do you want to say anything? Do you want to say anything? Okay. Joe Fernia, 154 Taylor Street. So what is the percentage increase over last year for? 1%. In order for the motion under Article 9 to pass, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The, mo the motion passes unanimously. The moderator will now call on Chief Mitchell to present the motion under Article 10. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Law Chapter 148, Section 26I, as amended regarding automatic sprinkler systems for multiple dwelling units. Can I have a second? And I'll open the floor to comments. Mass General Law 148, Section 26I, automatic sprinkler systems in new or rehabilitated multiple dwelling units, the law, the law reads as follows. In a city, town, or district which accepts the provisions of this section, any building hereafter constructed or hereafter substantially rehabilitated so as to constitute the equivalent of new construction and occupied in whole or in part for residential purposes and containing not less than four dwelling units, including but not limited to lodging houses, boarding houses, fraternity houses, dormitories, apartments, townhouses, condominiums, hotels, motels, and group residences shall be equipped with an approved system of automatic sprinklers in accordance with the provisions of the State Building Code. In the event that the adequate water supply is not available, the head of the fire department shall permit the installation of such other suppressant systems as prescribed by the State Building Code in lieu of automatic sprinklers. Owners of buildings with approved and properly maintained installations may be eligible for a rate reduction of, on fire insurance. Simply, Residences having four or more dwellings will be required to have an automatic sprinkler system for new construction and for locations where substantial renovations will take place. Note that this section of the law will not affect single, double, or triple dwelling units, only those that will or may be expected to house many people in a relatively smaller, confined location. The intent of adopting this law is to protect many people living in close proximity by way of a detection and suppression system to contain or extinguish fires in one dwelling and minimizing or preventing fire spread to other dwellings. Along with preventing fire spread, we are looking to provide added protection to those who are considered our at-risk population who may not be capable of self-care or are mobility challenged. At-risk populations include our children, our elders, those who may be homebound due to illness or those that are not able to adequately uh, ambulate and exit a building on their own quickly. Thank you. Are there any questions? Come on up. Rich Dumaraki, Bachelor Street. I just had a quick question. Would that include uh, like private schools like McDuffie? It would because they're considered uh, dormitories, uh, but it would only take effect if they went through substantial renovations under uh, the code. 
Uh, come on up, and then you can speak after. Anthony Serini, Three Cedar Drive. I'd be uh, in, for this amendment, uh, especially since the fires that are occurring nowadays are hotter, fast, uh, burn faster. It will give the occupants of the building time to get out, uh, which uh, if you look at a fire from 20, 30 years ago, you had about 17 minutes to get out of a house. Now you got about three minutes, and especially with a small fire department. Uh, with limited uh, staff, this this will be saving lives. Thank you. Seamus Connolly, 21 Fairhill Road. I agree 100% with this amendment. It will help it, it will it will help people who are at risk, people who are in wheelchairs, people who are old and cannot get out, children who are small. Please vote for this amendment, and we and it, you know, if there is and please think of your children, your elderly brothers your elderly mothers or fathers, think of them. And what would they think? He is right. Fires are 30 times faster than they were 10 years ago, never mind 30 years ago. Thank you. Come on forward. Greg Leonard, 168 Badso Street. Um, for those of you who maybe don't know me, I'm also on the Board of Assessors. Um, this is a valid question. I really don't have an answer for it, but let's recognize the incredible cost that this is going to add to the buildings that we are talking about. There are businesses and that have just gone out of business because of the cost of an automated sprinkler system. Let's not ignore that, please. Just for clarification, uh, this is only going to apply to new construction or construction that is uh, going through a significant rehabilitation. Newer construction, it is far cheaper to install while being constructed than when it's retrofitted. The point of this, I understand the cost issue but we're talking about residences. We're not talking about your general businesses. There's a big difference between commercial properties and what would be considered residential. Dormitories, townhouses, condominiums, these are all residences where people sleep at night and, and reside. So please don't confuse this with a commercial property. In order for the motion to pass under Article 10, it must pass by a majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. Thank you. The moderator will now call on Mr. Joyce to present the last motion of the night under Article 11. Madam Moderator, I move the town vote to allow the Board of Selectmen to appoint a member of the Board of Selectmen to a position that is under their supervision of the Board of Selectmen as allowed under Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 268A, Section 21A. Second, and discussion. As you can see, by if you look around right now on how many people are sitting in here as you voters, even though we have approximately 4,500 registered voters in our town. Uh, some of our committees get shorthanded and can't have a quorum. For example, I'm on two committees. I'm on the Energy Committee and I'm on the Granby Economic and Development Committees. Basically, for me personally, if you don't approve this, I either have to leave the selectman's job or I gotta leave the committee's job because I can't do both without your permission. Now, this does affect all selectmen as the way it is written. But 
I'm just telling you how it affects me personally and what it does. But we do have a shortage of participation, shall we say, on our different committees, and we need to work on it. Until then, we're stuck with what we got. Are there any questions or comments? In order for the motion to pass under Article 11, it must pass by majority. All those in favor? Thank you. All those opposed? The motion passes by a majority. The moderator will now call for a motion to adjourn the annual town meeting and reconvene it on January 10th. Second. All those in favor, please raise your card. I need a majority. Thank you. Oh, what did I say? Oh, sorry. June 10th. June 10th, 2019. Got the second. You all raised in favor. Any opposed? I'll say no. Thank you.